All right. Well, we'll get get started here. Welcome to uh, welcome to live stream with Path of the Bee. I'm Charlie, and uh, we're trying to figure out how things work here. Get my camera adjusted and uh, that sort of thing. So, if you have any questions? Please let me know. That's what this is going to be all about. Um, I've got some questions. I've received some questions on uh, on some video comments and i think i'll start off by answering some of those the first one that i have that i think i'll address is feeding bees so um i've got some questions about do i feed syrup and and that sort of stuff yes i do um i feed bees in the spring and in the fall um in the spring i start feeding as soon as i have three days with the uh, temperature up above around 50 degrees and uh, and when I get three consecutive days, 50 degrees, it's still freezing at night, but it warms up to 50 and they're flying. That's when I feel it's time to go ahead and, and start feeding. That early in the spring, um, I have traditionally fed a one-to-one -one ratio to the theory is, is to stimulate um, brood rearing and, and get the queen laying. But the more I examine it, the, the, the more I'm kind of come into the conclusion that I like a two to one mix all year round um, for feeding bees. It seems to work better. They don't have to fight as much moisture in the hive that way. Um, all right. Hey, thanks for, I'm just using a laptop camera. This is a, uh, I've got a question there. This is just an Acer with a laptop. And uh, when I film with my camera, my videos, um, I have a, uh, a Sony Handycam, old, older one, when first model it came out with, kind of nice. And I finally figured out how to build a dead cat for it, for that wind noise that we had an issue with a little bit ago. We got some fuzz kind of rubber banded to it, and so that helped a lot. Editing software I use on my um, videos is, well, I can't recall the name of it right now. It'll come to me in a moment. Um, here, let me, let me look how that sound. It's, uh, it's CyberLink Power Director is what I use. And, uh, I did buy the upgraded version a little bit so that I could mess with, uh, video speeds. You'll forgive me. I'm going to be a little bit neurotic right now. There's a crop duster outside my house. And so I'll be looking around as the plane is crashing. <laughs> so anyhow, um, there we go. And, uh, the next, so I guess I'll continue on this feeding thing. I've uh, got that. Thanks, Scott, for the question. Um, I, I like to, like I said, I like to feed early on in the spring and to feed al along until I see dandelions um, producing pollen. And, and I feel that it's safe to stop feeding at that point um, unless the, the colony really demonstrates that it's just, you know, short of, of any resources coming in, then I'll go ahead and kind of continue along there. But usually that's the, the key to me when it's, when the time is that they're, they're bringing stuff in on their own, which I would prefer them to do in the spring is when we have a, a, a very abundant dandelion bloom. Um, and I quit then uh, traditionally in the fall. Um, as soon as I've done feeding bee or uh, harvesting honey, um, I'd like to go ahead and start feeding, um, not really hard, but just kind of a steady, regular. I, I just want to get that built up. So I try to have my honey off by about 15th of August and start building them up for winter at that point. Um, talking about feeders, I've used, uh, I've used Borman feeders. I've had a little, I messed a little bit with those frame ones. Some people really like them. I decided I really don't like them. Um, I've had good luck with Borman feeders which are the ones that stick outside and you put the upside down mason jar in with the little holes punched in the lid and everybody's like, Ugh. Um, they work really good. And uh, the trick to making the lids work, if you're, um, if you're a member of B source or, or, or even know what I'm talking about, just go on the internet, type up B source, get on their website. And on B source, if you looked in the archives, uh, there's a man by the name of Walt Wright. Um, he, he passed away. I, I was visiting with him on there when he was still alive, but uh, he was a rocket scientist. He retired and decided to start keeping bees. And so he, he's got the rocket science on how to make those lids work in his, 
in his archive articles there on B Source. I read what Walt has to say if you want to, you know, increase your beekeeping ability. Um, like I said, he was an honest to God rocket scientist, and then when he decided to retire, he became a beekeeper and put all of his inquisitive this into discovering what he could about beekeeping and it's a wealth of knowledge. So, um, so that's the deal with the, you know, check your lids. If they leak and drip, change them out, uh, make them get the holes smaller. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's well worth it. I built a tool to build my own lids for the Mason jars and I use, uh, just a regular Mason jar lid. And then the tool is, a. Uh, is just a tube that a nail will fit through and barely poke out, out the end. And then I sharpen it and keep sharpening it until it's small and just poking out the end. And I can put the tube on the lid on a block and tap it with a hammer and it'll poke just a little hole in there. If the hole's too big, I can grind just a little bit more on it and make the hole smaller. And then once it's the, once you've got that the right size, you can just sit there and punch, you know, 10 holes in that lid, like in no time flat. And they're all the right size there. And they work really good. Boardman feeders work really good. Um, in combination with an entrance reducer, I don't have robbing problems um, with them. Like I hear people talk about. Uh, and then I've this here lately have decided to start trying out the Saracel feeder. And uh, I've, I've fallen in love with the Saracel top feeder. Um, just really nice. I, uh, I've, uh, I've decided that I'm gonna, you know, start using those, uh, put them on in the fall. I think I'll, I took mine off last fall. Um, and, uh, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave them on year round now, um, uh, run, run them, run them dry late in the fall. And then if I had an emergency feed dry sugar in the winter, I can just pull little, uh, pieces, plastic pieces out, do that spring. They're already on there, put the little, uh, safety pieces back in and go back to feeding um, uh, a sugar sugar syrup in the in the spring and uh, you know that that would go you know really well type of a thing um, one other thing I guess I've discovered about uh, feeding I, I'm trying to think is is that the the two to one, Mixing your sugar up two to one, getting a two a scoop this that whatever. So what? How I do it, and it's it's a little trick I learned. Um, whatever container that you're going to mix your stuff in, just put your dry sugar in first, get it level, make a mark, get your hot water, fill it up until and mix it until the mixed up liquid syrup matches the same level that the dry sugar did in any size shape container that's two to one no measuring needed you don't need to measure anything just just mix the syrup to the same level as the dry sugar and you've got two to one and it works really good for me that way uh when i'm doing larger batches of sugar syrup i can you know mix up five gallon buckets or you know sometimes i do i have tried some open feeding in the past and that kind of works but you end up feeding the neighbor's bees too mm -hmm. Um, and I've used, uh, you know, 30 gallon pails and mixed sugar and syrup in those before also. Um, let me read here, Scott, you say, uh, have your syrup make sense to you. Okay. And then what's the benefit to feeding after pulling honey versus leaving? Well, um, so I, you know, harvest my honey in, uh, our, our honey flows in, you know, like your our fall honey flow ends July 15th of June. I've had, I've got everything off. And so I'm starting to feed for winter then. Um, and so they're still gathering natural honey. And then that feed that I put on, they're not really, they're not really going to bite into unless there's a dearth. And then that'll keep them kind of in the process of, of packing stores in. Um, and then we'll catch uh, rain showers in you know late august early september that we'll get our fall honey flow going hopefully and but we run out of time to dehydrate stuff and get things put away i like to give them that little bit of extra time to get filled up then then uh everything's dried down they're all stored up they've got their brood nest figured out what they you know i don't want to i don't want to have to late fall pound pound the um 
feed in so hard to plug up the that winter brood nest. That's I I, I want to avoid that. I guess so I want every I want it to be this gradual build up. Um, for uh, for the for that, it, it, does that make sense? What I'm trying to say, I, I hope it does. That I don't want to, I just don't want to plug the brood nest too quickly, um, because I do want those winter bees uh, to hatch and, and you know have as big a nest as possible. But I want them to to have that feel comfortable with that resource. There we go. Okay, and uh, what else did I have on feeding? Um, Well, I think that's it at the moment that I can think of. This is spring feed. Um, yeah, and then, like I said, I, I try and feed as hard as I can in the spring simply because we've just come out of, out of harsh conditions. You know, my there's sometimes my bees don't fly um, at all. And I and that's another reason that I believe in feeding fall, too. I, I don't want honey. I want sugar water in there or sugar syrup in there because of the – my bees can't fly. And they're going to, they'll, they inevitably, depending on, you know, I have a few winters where they made it through, but my bees are going to end up defecating in the hive because they can't get out and fly. And especially if they've got a bunch of honey, if, if I put that sugar syrup in there with less solids in it, their, their, their guts are, are not as full and they have a better chance of making it through until we get some warm weather. Um, I guess that is one of my overwintering problems that I have is it's, it is, is dysentery. Um, and so that kind of helps me with that feeding the sugar water. So I, that's kind of why another reason that I guess I do start feeding in, in August is for, to kind of help alleviate that, those solids in the, in their feed in the, in the winter. Um, because it does them more harm than good. And, uh, Anyway, that's how I feel about it. Of course, you know how every beekeeper has a different opinion um, on, on that. So, all right. And then uh, another question. Let's see. Joseph wrote me the other day, and he was, uh, he was wondering about um, robbing his, bee, his bees getting robbed. Um, and he, he uses robbing screens and, and things like that. Uh, and I, I don't have a lot of trouble with robbing, so I'm, I'll end up doing some more research on that. I, and I have read, you know, things about it. I have had robbing experiences, and generally, once I have a robbing experience, um, things are going on. So obviously, the hive is getting robbed. I just screen them in 100. Uh, percent The bees that belong to that colony will just cluster on the outside of it, and then in the evening, when everybody's supposed to be home you can pull that screen and they'll crawl back in. They don't need to fly. And the bees that are there belong to that colony. The robbers went back home. And so you can get everybody put back together that way. Um, I'm hoping that kind of answers a little bit of Joseph's question. And I'll type, I'll type that out to a, an official response to him. Cause I don't know if he's on here or not, but, or, or we'll see this, but um, so, so that's kind of uh, kind of, my big re big screen where I can see with my glasses is over here. That's why I'm always looking up over here instead of at you guys. Um, so, all right. Um, I guess uh, I guess I don't really have. Oh, I, today was uh, this weekend really hectic weekend. Uh, Dad's auction preview uh, Friday auction Saturday rained on us. Everything turned into a muddy mess. People got really good deals. It was a wonderful time. I had fun pulling people out of the mud with my tractor. Um, it was it was an enjoyable experience, but and very very busy. And today has also been very busy loading people out and uh, and getting some things put away and that sort of stuff. And I have not managed to get by and see my honeybees today. Even I was gonna try and pull a frame of honey out, see how much nectar they hopefully put in by now a little bit. And, uh, but I, I didn't get that opportunity. Um, do have favorable weather today. I think it got up to 65 today or something and uh, it's sunny, partly cloudy, that sort of stuff. That's why the airplane is flying fields on a Sunday. So, um, so there's that. And uh, I'll, uh, 
hopefully next week we'll well i'm for sure we'll get in there next week and uh look and see where we're at on honey production if they're getting some nectar in i did check the i live uh i live where there's camas which is a blue flower that the uh nespers um Indians uh, used as a staple food crop. Um, it's a really beautiful little blue flower. Comes up from a bulb. It's a starch type bulb, uh, and they uh, they they dug it up this root bulb up out of the ground and made pits and cooked it in the pit and uh, and it was you know they ate it anyways. It's just starting to bloom, and uh, I'm sure the bees will start working on it this week. If I get the chance to get some footage of that, I'll kind of kind of show you guys. It's it's. Uh, it's unique when a, a green field turns blue. It looks like water because uh, it's just a solid um, field of, of blue flower. So um, kind of neat. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I can share that with you. And uh, so I hope to go for half hour, but um, with the airplane going outside, I'm feeling a little and the hectic weekend of feeling a bit scrambled. Um, if anybody's got any more questions, throw them up real quick and uh, I'll answer them. Otherwise, I think we'll just uh, enjoy the rest of our Sunday evening and uh, and move on. So anybody else got anything to say there? All right. Well, thanks, Scott. appreciate you joining me. Uh, it was really good. And uh, I'll try and get the video out for the bottom boards and tops on the divided stuff. And uh, this sometime this week, I'm shooting for Wednesday. That's my goal. I don't know if I'll stick to it the way it's starting in on spring, but, but I'll, I'll put some effort into it. And uh, you bet. All right. Well, we'll catch you. We'll catch you with uh, next Sunday vlog. Then. Thanks, guys.